Welcome back, brothers, to yet another episode here on the O'Shea Vlogcast channel. Today, or tonight, rather, well, shit, to, today, if you in, you know, the States, tonight, if you're in Europe or certain parts of the world, we got a double header, man. We had Donovan Sharp on a little bit earlier today, and now we have, uh, you know, the living legend himself. You guys know him. Uh, he's much bigger than, than the most of us guys. He's been out for, for a lo very long time. Uh, for those of you who have uh, who read regularly on negromanosphere.com, many of you will read it religiously. He's our Monday columnist. Uh, and uh, wow, we had negromanosphere.com awards. He did a, a, a triple bypass suite. He took the Black YouTuber of the Year Award, took the Writer of the Year Award. Uh, he took the Best Dating Coach of the Year Award. And I still owe him the Editor's Choice Award for being the most read in 2000. Uh, 17. I think he had over 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 a quarter, over half a million uh, page views by himself on his articles. Uh, and that is the one and only Alan Roger Curry. We're glad to have him back on the show. What's going on with your player? Hey, man, I'm loving your digs, man, in South Africa, dude. It looks like you, you, you know, real cool. Hey, I can't see myself. Can they see me? They can see you. I think they can see you. Hold on. Let me see. Oh, okay. There you go. Let's see myself, man. Okay, let me I see, see myself. All right, so yeah, they 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 see you. So uh, yeah, man, good to see you guys here, man, and definitely good to see everybody in the chat room. Shout out to the moderators uh, and Alan, man. You know, I can I could barely get you, you know, on a hangout. Only it's a spontaneous thing with you. You know, you don't you and Rom, <laughs> y'all play them games with me. I think it's because I'm dark skinned. But when I can get you on, I'm glad to have you, man. So, thank, you know, welcome to the show, man. You know, you have done a lot for this particular Black Manosphere community. You've given a lot of credibility. Um, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people would have taken this as serious um, had you not come aboard, man. So thank you for your contributions uh, to the to what is known as the Black Manosphere here, uh, you know, in America and worldwide. Well, I appreciate it, man. And uh, thank you for those beautiful plaques I have on my wall, man. You know, I, I think you might have saw I shot I highlighted them last week yeah. on one of my videos, man. And uh I look at them every day, man. So uh very you, appreciative. You cried them. Did you cry a river or what? Hey man, yeah. When I got all three of my plaques, man, I was choked up, man. I was like, finally I feel appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and then you didn't have to pay for none of them, right? They That's right. And I want to say that free. real quick, man. Uh, I want to just give a shout out to all the supporters. Those people have been supporting the 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 website as well as the stream. Um, and I'm not saying anything pejorative about the white minister, but from what I understand, they do not have uh, you know any kind of award show for 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 themselves. Um, and I can say that the brothers who have supported us by either on Patreon or uh, and some women too are on the, the the streams. We were able to furnish all of our guys for the most part with plaques. I still owe Tony Macy a one and. Um, and Alan Roger Curry, the fourth one, but we were, were able to do it with the support of you brothers, man. So it, it just goes to show you that we have our own uh, pretty much little economy going on over here and that we could treat our writers uh, with great accolades and, and not presented with bullshit awards, but with great awards. So um, again, thank you guys who support not only myself, but Alan Roger Curry as well. Uh, you know, let me ask you this, man, because you, you messaged me, you know, I know you're getting ready to fly out tonight. But if you want to do a show on this particular topic, uh, you, we can do it. And that is we'll talk about sex to quickly turn women off. Let's talk about that real quick. And why did you want to address this particular topic today? Well, it started actually. Well, I've, I've been getting that. Questions related to this for years, probably like 20 years. And. Um, but as you know, we had the, the infamous discussion and debate last a week ago today last sunday when i was in miami beach that included uh donovan sharp and alpha male strategies mm -hmm. and so since that interview just last week i've been either getting private messages or i've been seeing guys in the comment section saying yeah man you know mo one sound cool but man i think most women would be turned off if you start talking about sex too quickly and or too straightforwardly. So I just wanted to, you know, take about, you know, 45 minutes, hour or so to address okay. 
this 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 question slash challenge I get from so many men that because that seems to be most men's I would arguably say that's most men's number one um, hesitation for exhibiting mo one behavior they they think they assume that the average woman is going to get turned off if you talk about sex too quickly. Okay, okay, and uh, that's you know it's pretty interesting. I was explaining to uh, you know I was talking about I was talking to a particular uh, lady. Uh, that you that you that you uh, has recently met, and I was explaining uh, that particular system uh, to her, and she was like, "Really? That 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 works?" So even some women feel, I mean, at least think that uh, okay, this is a little b- a bit of a risky thing. So let's address uh, whatever you wanted to address, and we'll kind of go from there. Well, here's the thing, man. Um, most women have been socialized two things. Most women, well, first of all, speaking of socialized, if there's two words a lot of guys will hear me use is social programming, social programming. And what that represents is the collective sum of a man or woman's beliefs, attitudes, cultural conditioning, their fears and their egotistical insecurities. And on women, women have been socialized two things. Number one, most women have been socialized to present themselves to men as an innocent, wholesome, strictly monogamy oriented, good girl. Okay. Okay. Good girl. And the reason for that is because traditionally it has been thought it started with, I would say, if if not before, it started with the Victorian era, which was an era in England in the 19th century where under Queen Victoria, there was this belief and assertion that only women who were virgins were qualified to be married. But if you had already engaged in premarital sex, or just sex outside the context of marriage that you you were you were literally considered not qualified to be married okay so that's where this uh, the big notion of the whole good girl came from okay and along with that dr sigmund freud a legendary uh psychologist he came up with a concept of what is known as the madonna horror complex where he asserted that most men only want to seriously date and marry a woman who they feel possesses the best qualities of their mother and that they want you know their wife to be their personal good girl okay but then on the opposite end they want to have casual sex and non-marital sex with women who are pretty much just the antithesis of their mom or the antithesis of a good girl so that's where this whole dichotomy of the good girl versus the slut comes from. And it's permeated for years, man. You you have men to this day that will conveniently divide women into those two categories. They will either categorize women as good girl types or slut types. And I did too. I would say probably in middle school and high school, I had that attitude. I had this attitude of women as being either innocent, wholesome, monogamy oriented good girls or kinky, promiscuous freaks. And in my mind, because that's what a lot of guys would do. Here, here was what I'll start with high school. In high school, a lot of guys. Main routine was I'm going to find a good girl to become my, my long term girlfriend. Yes. And then. I'm going to find a kinky freak or a slut type to cheat on my girlfriend on the side with. <laughs> no comment. At, at, minimum, at minimum one, and some guys, they might try to find as many as two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. And so that, that, was, that, was, that was the thing in, in high school, you know, was every guy had that, pretty much had that attitude. You, have a, you find a good girl, an innocent, wholesome good girl to be your girlfriend. And then you find more of a slutty type, promiscuous type to be your, your girl on the side. And as you know from previous interviews with me, the number one thing that changed 
I'll borrow this term from Stephen Covey, the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He uses this term paradigm. He says there's things we observe and experience that change our paradigm. And the first thing that changed my paradigm, and most people who, who've been longtime followers of me, they, they know what I'm about to say, was the summer in between my the end of my senior in high school and the beginning of my freshman year in college, I saw this adult film, aka porn movie, called Talk Dirty to Me. Okay. Where this legendary porn star named John Leslie, he was considered one of the top actors in the adult film industry. Okay. He played this alpha male womanizer named Jack. And his claim to fame was basically Mo One. He he would approach women, and within I'd say on average within the first three to five minutes of the conversation, in a very smooth, confident, seductive manner, he would let women know he wanted to fuck them. And the normal kind of the normal reaction would be for the first few minutes, women would have a negative reaction to it. You know, like, oh my God, I don't believe you're you're talking to me this way. You know, I'm not, I'm not a slut, I'm not a whore, and blah 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 blah. And he would just keep us cool. He was smirking their face. He would look totally unfazed by any criticism they threw his way, any insult they threw his way. And sure enough, he would end up fucking them. Mm-hmm. And I was watching this movie. The first time I watched it, it was actually me, my brother, and this friend of our family. He was the one who actually owned the movie. Because he, he, it was funny, this friend of my family, his name is Marlon. He didn't even like to watch porno movies for the sake of getting aroused by him. He would crack jokes and shit while he was watching porno movies. So he would always point out shit that he thought was funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And But anyway, you know, I was sitting there and my brother could tell I was taking mental notes. Mm-hmm. And my brother at the time, he said, hey, man, this is a porno movie, man. I mean, don't take this serious. You know, you couldn't get away with that in real life. In real life, you know, a woman would probably slap you or throw a drink in your face for talking about sex that quickly and that straightforwardly. Okay. So I said, okay. But now fast forward to college. I was in college. And the next turning point was I was having a, and I've told this story a dozen times, but I'll tell it again. But I was in a room, a dormitory room, with these three women that were members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. It's a well-known black sorority. Mm -hmm. And they were asking me, they said, Alan, can we pick your brain? Can we get your opinion on something? I said, sure. Mm -hmm. And they said, why is it that a lot of men will give you the misleading impression that they want to be your next long-term boyfriend But then once you have sex with them two times, five times, 10 times, whatever, all of a sudden you just don't hear from them again. And I said, oh, that's easy. I said, what it comes down to, these men really just wanted casual sex, but they didn't have the balls to tell you that straightforwardly because they were scared you would reject them, scared you wouldn't be down for it. So they felt the need to give you the misleading impression that they wanted something serious, but they knew. and their attitude was, well, first, thing, it was funny. They just kind of looked at each other. I don't know if you've ever been around groups of women when they kind of give each other this cold look mm-hmm. that they, they, they understand amongst themselves. So that's the first thing that they, they looked at each other. Mm-hmm. And what they went on to say was, and the reason why they gave each other that look, they went on to explain in simple terms, they put it like, well, Alan, it's like this. We know the men who we want to fuck just to be fucking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And see, I did a video. If you pay attention, if anybody pay attention to my videos and say the last month, I did a video called Fuck Buddy versus Boyfriend slash Husband versus Platonic Friend. Because mm-hmm. it's just like us. I mean, oh, shit, let's be real, man. If you're being honest and most men will be honest, we don't have all women in the same cat. Matter of fact, I just talked about that a few minutes ago, how most men divide women into good girls and sluts. That is true. We have certain women that will say, yeah, I just want to fuck her. Whether it be for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, we'll be like, I just want to fuck her. Right. And then there'll be other women that will be like, oh, man, I want her to be my main boo. I want her to be like my main lady. You know, I right. might even wipe her up. Right. Well, the thing that a lot of men seem not to realize is that women are the same way. Okay. Women have guys that they put in those same category. They'll look at certain guys and be like, oh, now him, I'll fuck him just to be fucking. 
I just want some of that. <laughs> then another guy that'd be like, no, nah, with him, I want him to be my boyfriend or, or potential husband. Then another guy that'd be like, oh, I just want him to be my my play brother, my you know platonic friend. Okay. And that's what these women in the sorority basically explained to me. They was like, the attitude was, why are me and Lion, we know who we want to fuck casually versus the guys. And see, what pisses them off is most women, if they have you in, say, the boyfriend category, they don't want you to be in the fuck better category. <laughs> it's that simple. Just like we wouldn't. If we got a woman in the fuck buddy category, we don't want her to be in the girlfriend category or vice versa. Okay. Let me, and so, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Here's what I want to ask you then, right? Because, all right, a lot of guys don't understand the idea that, hey, you know, women have their own categories like we do. We don't understand there's reciprocity there. But let's say, uh, I, I know you're a dating coach. Or you've been one uh, one of the, you know, America's great greatest dating coaches in the last, uh, you know, decade and a half. Um, mm -hmm. What if a guy in his encounters with women uh, if he is constantly being, let's say, friend zoned, or if he mm -hmm. is uh, constantly being looked at as the provider type, yeah. So, are are there some guys that send off more vibes that make them, let's say, more? Hey, this is the kind of guy I want to fuck. Like in the next thirty minutes to twenty four hours. In other words, is there a difference when the women that, that come across you are most or most women that come across Alan Roger Curry looking for short term sexual uh, encounters or do they look at you as this is the kind of guy that I want to marry? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, do, uh, are, are these guys sending out the wrong uh, particular signals and because those signals is, is are the reasons why they are classified in the way that they are? Sure. That's why you hear me always talk about the delineation between alpha males and beta males. Okay. That's one of the, the, the basis for that. Because here's the thing, man. If I had to look at, I, I always, one of my golden rules related to my advice to guys is this. This kind of price supersedes any other aspect of my advice, which is never confuse the appeal of your sexual companionship with the appeal of your non-sexual companionship. Okay. I remember on blog, when I did my blog talk radio show, one of my best interviews and conversations was with a woman from New York named Dr. Veronica Anderson. Okay. And if I find a link to it, I'll send it to you after this show over. Maybe you can include it in the comment section or description section. But okay. she was one of the few women who thought just like me because in a nutshell during the course of that interview and discussion she basically made that point she said a lot of men and women make the mistake of thinking that if they develop five-star non-sexual chemistry with someone that that's automatically going to translate into five-star sexual chemistry and she was basically like that's apples and oranges she said you can have five-star non-sexual chemistry with someone and have only one or two star sexual chemistry. And on the flip that side, very, very fucking true. Man, on, the, on the flip side, you can have five star sexual chemistry with someone, but you can have only one or two star non sexual chemistry, which is the reason why you have the three. If you go to my website, directapproachdating.com, you'll see a picture with three different types of relationships I highlight. Okay. And these are basically any relationship you have with a woman is going to fall in one of these three categories. Strictly sexual, which we mm -hmm. is commonly known as fuck buddies or casual sex lovers. Strictly non-sexual, which would, of course, be a platonic friendship. And then a relationship that combines a blend of both, both enjoyable sexual companionship with enjoyable non-sexual companionship, which most people refer to as a romantic relationship. And... Some guys think if they start off developing this real strong non-sexual chemistry, that at some point in time, either in that, that first conversation or days later, that the woman's going to say, God, I had such a great conversation with Frank 
he was so nice and flattering and entertaining, and he seems like a good, quiet guy. I think I'm going to go ahead and give him some pussy. No, nah, it don't work that way. <laughs> so, it's their dog face here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm glad you said it. Yeah, that's become my signature phrase now. But see, to answer your question more directly, you said do some guys, I don't like to use PUA terms, but in this case, I'm going to use a PUA term. A lot of PUAs use this term called frame. Okay. You hear that a lot when PUAs talk about that. They'll talk about having a certain frame. Well, if I had to implement that term myself, again, even though I don't like most conventional PUA terminology, but if you start off with a woman with friendship frame, platonic friend type frame, that's when you're the most likely to be put in the friend zone okay. because you're showing the woman that I want to be flattering to you. I want to be entertaining to you. I want to be an emotionally empathetic listening ear to you and listen to your problems and frustrations. I'll offer it. I'll, I'll spend money on you for no good reason other than the fact that you're pretty and sexy. Right there, a woman says, shit, what motivation do I have to give this motherfucker some pussy if he's giving me everything I want non-sexually without me giving him some pussy? Mm -hmm. He's giving me flattering attention. He's, he's providing me with entertaining conversation. He's spending money on me. He's listening to me talk about all my bullshit problems. And I ain't even had to suck his dick, give him a hand job, or give him some pussy. Shit, she don't want to keep you as a great platonic friend because you're giving her everything she wants non-sexually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, to refer back to last Sunday's discussion, Donovan had mentioned at one point about he likes to have women qualify him. And I'm not going, you know, if that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. I'm not going to disparage his, his beliefs or his way of doing things. But I'll say this, man. I ain't trying to make it hard for no woman to get my dick. I want to make it easy as hell to get my dick. Okay. What, what, where I make it challenging for women is for them to secure my non-sexual attention and companionship. Okay. That's what a woman's going to have the challenge of her life with me is when she's trying to secure. Because my attitude is this, man. I'm not going to provide any woman with hours of flattering attention, hours of entertaining conversation, free lunches, free dinners, and be an emotionally empathetic listening to her problems. And that woman ain't had my dick in her mouth or her pussy. <laughs> she gonna have to. She gonna have to earn my motherfucking non-sexual attention and companionship. So the thing is, man, going back to the, the the concept of frame, man. If you want the best chance of turning a woman's on sexually, you got to start off with a sexually provocative frame. You got to start off with an alpha male frame. You can't start off with a platonic friend frame. You can't start off with a I'll, uh, immediately with a I want to be your next long-term boyfriend frame or I want to be your future husband frame. My attitude is this, man. A woman got to earn that shit. You shouldn't just quickly and easily qualify a woman as being girlfriend material or wife material. My attitude is if a woman wants that status, the status of being your long term girlfriend or your future wife or somebody that you seriously invest a lot of time, energy, effort and money into, she got to earn that. You don't just give that to a woman. She got to earn that. And so. When I talk to women, man, I start off with the attitude that as of right now, in my first conversation with you, the only thing you can do to excite me is to suck my dick and give me some pussy. Period. Now, some guys will think, well, damn, man, that, that's kind of too, too bold too ballsy, too straightforward. You know, some women going to get turned off by that. Let me tell you guys something listening to this podcast right now. No woman who enjoys sex gets turned off 
by conversations about sex. Okay. Let me repeat that. No woman, unless she's experienced some sexual trauma or something, like she got raped or molested when she was young or some kind of traumatic experience, those would be the exceptions. But any woman who has a healthy sex drive, she doesn't get turned off by sex. So any woman who tells you that she gets turned off by conversations that center around sex, that's bullshit. Here's why women gonna act like they're turned off. And this goes back to the concept of social programming and how women are brainwashed. Women, by most women's mothers and even their mother and fathers, brainwash women to believe that a man should offer them something for their pussy. Okay. They're brainwashed to believe that they got the golden pussy between their legs, that it's worth high value, and that a man should court a woman for her pussy, should woo a woman for her pussy, should spend all kinds of money on her for a pussy, should spend all types of time, significant amounts of time with her in exchange for a pussy. But see, guess what? Guess what? We are biological creatures, no. O'Shea. And see, even though we as human beings try to intellectualize sex, mm -hmm. our bodies don't. <laughs> That's our true. Bodies That's true. Certain, our bodies have certain triggers. So in other words, if a woman gets in your presence with nice tits and a nice ass, it's not like you can intellectually say, well, that woman does have a nice figure, but I intellectually choose not to be turned on by those nice tits and that nice ass because I'm a man <laughs> of good <group> character. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm a man of integrity. And I just don't allow any woman to turn me on who has nice tits and nice ass. So I'm going to intellectually choose not to be turned on. Fuck that. <laughs> if a woman has some nice tits and nice ass, your body is going to react to it. That You're going to be like, damn. Your dick probably going to start getting hard. Okay. Same with women, man. Women have certain things that trigger their pussy to get wet. Some of them are visual. Some of them are auditory. And, you know... Yeah, those would be the two main is, is both visual and auditory things. Okay. In other words, things they see and things they hear. OK. What I do. Is in a matter of speaking, I when I talk to women, I want to challenge their social program. I don't want to play into it because if you play into a woman's social programming, you're you're you're, you're going right into her expectations. Right. And in a nutshell, that ain't going to turn a woman on, man. Mm hmm. Women get turned on when you say things that agitate, challenge, or frustrate their social program. For example, if a, let's say a woman's social program is believed that you got to take her on five dates and spend money on her before she even thinks about giving you a tongue kiss. And you say, oh, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that, Linda. I'm willing to take you out on five dates and, you know, buy you the best dinner in a restaurant. See, in her mind, in a matter of speaking, you know what happens? When she hears you say that, you might think that's going to excite her, that you playing right into her. But in her mind, she says, boring. I know I can, I know I can make any demands to this guy and any request to this guy, and he's going to adhere to him. Whereas, like, say a woman wants to say that to me. She said, hey, Alan, you know, if you want to even think about getting in my pants, you got to take me to a five-star restaurant five Fridays in a row and buy me the best dinner and the best champagne in there. And I'm like, shoot, you crazy. Excuse me? You heard me. You're going to be sucking my dick after I take you to Dairy Queen and get you a burger and a chocolate shake. That's what's going to happen. You're going to suck the shit out of my dick, and I'm going to fuck the shit out of you. And then I'm going to have you buy me dinner at a five-star restaurant. Yeah. See, in her mind, Externally, she's going to act pissed. She's going to be like, what did you say? I can't believe you're talking to me that way. But in her mind, she's going to be like, oh, this motherfucker got some balls. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker got some backbone. So he's challenging my, my demands and requests. I'm letting her know I'm my own man. That she can't just say, Alan, you jump. And I say, how hot? See, here's the thing you got to remember. A lot of guys just concentrate on getting pussy. And not that that's the worst thing in the world, but here's the thing, man. I've talked about this a number of times, both publicly and privately with my clients. 
generally speaking, there's two ways you could get pussy, man. You can get pussy on a woman's terms, or you can get pussy on your own terms. Now, some guys might be like, well, I just want to get some pussy. I don't care on whose terms it is. I just want to get some pussy. Okay. Whereas I'm the type of guy, I always want pussy on my terms. I don't want pussy because I, I had to agree to jump through a bunch of hoops to get it. Because trust me, any woman who thinks she got the golden pussy between her legs, she going to try to get you to jump through as many hoops as possible before she says, okay, I'll give you some pussy. In that situation, what she's doing, she's giving you pussy as kind of what I call a doggy treat. Okay. You can doggy treat pussy. I don't want doggy treat pussy. I want a woman. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to squirt this I want a no, woman pussy so wet mm -hmm. that she's damn near dying for me to fuck her. Okay. I'm going to ask you a follow-up question on this, but I want to, uh, before I get to the super chat, uh, there's a brother, man, that actually was, a. Uh, if it probably wasn't for him, I wouldn't even have came to YouTube. I was already on YouTube. I wouldn't have took it seriously. And that is the one I, I refer to him as Master Ringo TV Raw. Uh, man, I, I love that brother, man, so much. Uh, he's now known as Blackmail at Advice TV. He's been you know, uh, you know, doing doing YouTube for many years, man. I got nothing but respect for him. He's definitely my big bro in this. So I'm just so glad that he came by tonight and uh, you know, decided to comment. So you guys go subscribe to Blackmail Advice TV. He is he is definitely my big bro in this, uh, and the YouTube thing. He's the one that told me, Hey man, you know, you need to take this serious, you need to do this, you need to do that. So uh, you guys uh hope I can get him on a show. He like Alan Roger Curry, though. You know, you trying to get them dudes, man, light skinned dudes. They don't, you got <laughs> they hard to get on interviews, man. Lights get niggas that, yeah, I might come back. I don't know, nigga. I'll let you know. But shout out to him. I know he's a busy person. Let me just do this real quick, Alan. Desirel Jones, mm -hmm. shout out to her. Love you, ARC. Do you think your approach should change based on a woman's age? Okay, I'm going to ask that question. My man, uh, DJ Cadillac, thank you, brother. Sex starts early that women are burnt out early during night super chat. Riz Jeezy, put out our super chat. Let me ask Desirel's questions real quick. First, and then I have a follow-up question that I want to ask based off what you've been talking about. Um, so again, she says, love you, ARC. Do you think your approach should change based on a woman's age? Mm, not really. Why? Is Although that? I will say this. Young women are more likely to play head games than older women, but that's not to say older women won't play head games. But I would say if I had to loosely generalize Young women, I was just talking about women making you jump through hoops. Okay. Your women are the main ones who are going to try to make you jump through hoops. And it's understandable because the younger woman is, the higher her sexual marketplace value is. Mm -hmm. So a woman's attitude is, well, I got 15 niggas a day throwing dick my way. Why should I choose your dick? Okay. What makes your dick special? So that's why they're going to, that's the, the number one impetus for why they're going to initiate head games with you because that's their way of saying to you you know why should i choose you okay. whereas an older woman she ain't got as many dicks thrown her way once a woman is 40 and older she ain't gonna have that many dicks thrown her way so she's gonna be less likely to engage in head games and she, you know she she knows if she wants to fuck and she's gonna tell you straightforwardly you know yeah i, I want some of that dick I see Tony Maceo talking about not this ball rubbing ass nigga again. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> Professor, man. <laughs> uh, professor, professor Tony Maceo, man. He's he, let me see if he's in the chat. He's in the chat right now. Yeah, he's in the chat. He's in the chat. He oh, said not this ball right rubbing there. ass nigga again. There he goes right there. <laughs> that is our that is our Tuesday column. <laughs> Uh, Monday meets Tuesday. You guys know, shout out to Tony Maceo, man. He won. I got to send his award out this week. Uh, but yeah, man, Tony Maceo is an awesome, awesome writer uh, on, on the... On the uh, I'd, I'd like to get you and Tony Maceo on the same show together at one point. I'd be interested to have you on at the same time. Um, well, let me ask you this real yeah, quick. Yeah, would. Yeah. That'd be very okay. good. Let me ask you this real quick. Okay. With respect to... I mean, because I know... Uh, and, and again, shout out because you you actually gave me a, a free copy of uh, of one, one audio on um, not an audio book. Um, you gave it to me on a paperback edition. I haven't finished reading the whole thing, but I think what most people think mm -hmm. that when it comes to mode one, 
I think most people misjudge it based off of misconception or not understanding the principle of it. There's been people um, who've read it and still don't understand it multiple times. Uh, and we, we won't get into that right now, but obviously we, we know I mean, one situation in particular. But there have been guys who've read the book and still don't understand the meaning of it. So do most guys think that Mo One means I'm going to walk up to a chick and say, hey, I really want to put my dick down your eyebrow lids or something, or I'm going to just put my dick in your earlobes, or I would really like to put my tongue all in your ass. I mean, that's what people think that Mo One, a lot of people think that, hey, is that, that's what Mo One is is about, but it's actually much more complex than just saying something like that. That's actually stupid. But I mean, let me know what you what, what, what your uh, uh, take is on that. I think a lot of people would misjudge or, or misinterpret your product uh, for the fact that they never one and never read it, and they don't understand the um, the delivery and the seduction behind it. Okay, good, great question. Um, I just actually did a video just on Friday that's titled triple X rated language is not a mandatory requirement for being more. And in that video, I took a lot of the blame and I'll, I'll do it here on this show. I take some of the part of the blame for a lot of the misinterpretations because one of the things I'm known for is telling a lot of my infamous seduction stories and more specifically my same day seduction stories. Mm -hmm. And some of them do involve me saying, triple x rated stuff to women like within the first 5 10 15 seconds of my conversation okay and also, and along with that a lot of them involve me using a lot of profane sexually explicit x rated language but speaking of my books one thing i make clear in my books is that you don't have to use profanity or x rated language to be more one I, I talked about the three types of companionship you can pursue from a woman, again, which is strictly sexual, combination of sexual and non-sexual, okay. or strictly non-sexual. Now, we can eliminate one of those three, strictly non-sexual, because I don't know any single heterosexual man that goes out looking for female platonic friends. So that's bullshit. Okay. And here's the main essence of mole one is when you know what type of relationship you're looking for. Okay. Now, there's some guys who don't know. And for those guys, those are the guys I actually tell them, maybe you should stick to Mo too, if you're in that situation. <laughs> so let's say you, you meet a woman and you say, I'm not sure if I want a strictly sexual companionship with this woman or a blend of sexual and non-sexual companionship with this woman. I'm just not sure, at least not in the first conversation. Okay then maybe you should take things slow and get to know it. Because if you think there's even a strong possibility that you want to spend a lot of time with a woman non-sexually, then guess what? You should have a conversation with that woman to find out why her non-sexual com uh, companionship is worthwhile. It's that simple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if I meet a woman and I know that 95% of the time I'm going to spend with her is just for sexual companionship, why the fuck do I need to know what her favorite movies are and what she, the fact that she was on the chess team in college for? That ain't got shit to do with my time I'm gonna spend with her. Okay. So going back to that college story I told you about the sorority women, it start, Mo, here's what was the starting point of Mo One. Most of my frat, I hate to throw my frat brothers under the bus, but I would do it to, in a lighthearted way anyway. But see, a lot of my frat brothers and even some of my non frat brother friends, their normal routine, in the in the mid 80s was if you want a casual sex for a woman what you do is you start off pretending like you're open to being that woman's long-term boyfriend and then once you get the pussy you just go ghost on that woman see i don't believe in that shit man i don't believe in that shit number one on just a fundamental level i think that's unethical man to toy with somebody's emotions like that mm -hmm. I think that's just wrong. And in the modern day society, not only is it just unethical, but because most women know the game so well, you said when you, you try to use that routine with a woman, you setting yourself up to be played. And that's what where my book, The Possibility of Sex, comes into play. That's why I wrote The Possibility of Sex, because guys were asking me, well, Alan, 
what's so wrong with being like indirect or what's so wrong with giving a woman a misleading impression that you want to be her boyfriend just to get some ass? If you want to know the answer, read my book, The Possibility of Sex. I'll point out to you. Because okay. see, as I told Alpha Male Strategies in one of my videos, because he kind of promotes that to a degree. Okay. The idea of, of making a woman feel like you open to being her boyfriend just to get some ass. Mm -hmm. But see, if you do that routine, the first thing most women are going to do is they're going to make you prove to them that you value and appreciate their non-sexual attention and companionship. Mm -hmm. And see, once you do that, you that's when you set yourself up to be played. Because see, here's what a lot of men don't realize. A lot of men thinks, when, think when it comes to women using men, I think most men know that women will use men for their financial resources and their material possessions. But what I point out in my book, The Possibility of Sex, is that women will use you for something as simple as just flattering attention and entertaining conversation. Yeah. They don't even have to be something to do with money. Like, there's a lot of women that, let's say they bored one day, and they want to have, engage in a 20 to 30 minute conversation oh, yeah. that's a combination of flattering to their ego and entertaining. They'll say, oh, there go O'Shea. He's real funny. Mm -hmm. I'm bored right now. So I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a talk to O'Shea and make, have him make me laugh and have him tell me how good I look in his dress and say, you might spend a half hour telling her, like, oh, girl, you know you looking sexy in that dress. He's like, oh, O'Shea, you're, so, you're so crazy. Oh, girl, shoot, boy, I do all that kinds of things with that big old booty in that dress. The way it's like, you look like, oh, she's like, oh, O'Shea, you're so crazy. And then you crack some jokes. And then let's say after that 30 minutes, you really want to hook up with her. You're like, Hey Tangie, you know let's uh let's get together. Oh no, <laughs> you like my brother, you know. Oh, no. Or she might even say you like my brother. See, this is the trick that when women want to play you, and this is why my book is called the possibility of sex. A savvy manipulator, what she's gonna do? She's never gonna tell you straightforwardly. Oh Shay, you ain't got no chance of getting this pussy. A rejected woman. <laughs> A woman who's a reject. Okay, just to remind your audience, and every time you interview me, I end up bringing up these four archetypes. You go ahead. But let me bring them up again. There's four archetypes of women I discuss in my books. One is a reciprocator. Re another is a rejecter. Another is a wholesome pretender slash erotic hypocrite. And another is a manipulative time waster. Now, most of the people who read my books and are familiar with my books are familiar with those four archetypes, but I'll quickly give the gist of each one. A reciprocator is a woman that once you let her know that you're interested in having sex with her, whether it's long-term, short-term, monogamous, or non-monogamous, she's going to fairly quickly and straightforwardly reciprocate your sexual desires, interests, and intentions. She's not going to resist having sex with you. She's not going to express any degree of reluctance. She's not going to try to engage in any head games. She's going to let you know that, hey, I'm interested in fucking too. That's going to be the easiest pussy you ever going to get in your life. But it's also going to be the rarest pussy you gonna ever get in your life for the average guy. That's the reciprocator. A rejecter is a woman that once you let her know that you're interested in having sex with her, whether it's long-term, short-term, monogamous or non-monogamous, she's going to let you know fairly quickly and straightforwardly that she's just not interested okay. either because you're not her type or because she's already married or in a relationship. Okay. The two trickier archetypes, which is what most of my books center on is the wholesome pretender slash erotic hypocrite and a manipulative time waster. A wholesome pretender is a woman that is always, she always wants to present her. She knows that most men favor the good girls for relationships. Okay. She knows that. And I start off this conversation saying that most men make the mistake of putting women either in the good girl category or the kinky freak slut category. Here's the reality, fellas, that are listening right now. Only a small percentage of women 100% fall into one of those two categories. There's only a small percentage of women that I would say are 100% good girls or 100% kinky freaks slash sluts. Most women are a blend of both. They somewhere in the middle, what I call the shades of gray in the middle. 
they go. In other words, most women with some guys, they're going to present themselves as a good girl, primarily beta males, and other guys, they're going to quickly reveal that they got a kinky side or even a promiscuous side. Mm -hmm. But they ain't going to just up and tell you that. That's where the wholesome pretender comes into play. She's always going to want you to buy into the belief that she is a innocent, wholesome, strictly monogamy oriented good girl. Okay. But underneath, if you know how to talk to her in the right way, you know how to ask my mother called it in her generation, they call it talk dirty, knowing how to talk that talk. If you know how to talk, that <laughs> talk which is what I get paid some big money by a lot of my clients to teach them how to talk that talk. You can do what I call incite certain triggers in a woman. Okay. Because see, the wholesome pretender, here's why I like to, uh, the metaphor I like to use. When you're dealing with a wholesome pretender or erotic hypocrite, you know how in old cartoons they would always have a little angel on the right shoulder and a little yeah. devil on the left shoulder? That's kind of the mentality of the wholesome pretender and the erotic hypocrite. The wholesome pretender is going to have the little angel that represents her good girl side that's going to be saying, uh-uh, girl, Alan, he's just trying to get in your pants. Don't give him the pussy. You are a good girl. You are a good girl. And you are a respectable woman. And you don't just sleep with anybody, particularly when you first meet them. So you keep them legs closed. And you tell that man that he got to court you for weeks. He got to woo you for weeks. But then that little devil on her left shoulder represents her raw, kinky side. And that little devil going to be saying, no, nah, Alan Roger Curry talking some good shit in your ear. Mm -hmm. Girl, you better go ahead and give him that pussy. You know he's going to fuck you up. Right? <laughs> you know he's going to oh, that pussy. You better give him some of that pussy. So it's just a matter of... So you could say the whole concept of seduction centers around, are you persuasive enough to get her to listen to that little devil instead of the angel? Right. See, if a guy who has poor seduction skills... He ain't going to be able to persuade her to listen to the little devil voice. Okay. So the loudest voice in her mind is going to be that angel voice. Mm -hmm. But a master seducer knows how to get her to not listen to that little angel voice and listen more to that little devil voice. Now, erotic hypocrite is a more pretentious, <clears throat> more materialistic, and more argumentative version of a wholesome pretender. That's a woman who's going to try to emasculate you. So let's say, O'Shea, you approached a woman, you was mole one with her, and you told her straightforwardly that you wanted to fuck her. Erotic hypocrite's going to go off on you. She's going to be like, motherfucker, what did you say? Did you say you wanted to squeeze my ass and slap my ass and fuck me back yourself? You better apologize to me, motherfucker, right now, nigga. You better, you, you ain't had no home training. What's wrong with you? Right. Now, what's the average guy going to do when a woman starts going off on him like He's that? He's going to probably say, I'm sorry, and... Yeah, he's going to back down. He's going to be saying, oh, I'm sorry. I, I read this guy in L.R. Roger Green, but he's called Mo Wayne. He told me to say it. I didn't mean to say this shit. That ain't me. I'm a gentleman. I'm a classy guy. I, this is guy, L.R. Roger Green. He didn't know what he was talking about. Right there in that woman's mind, she's like, this motherfucker's a bitch. He's a beta male. All I got to do is criticize him and insult him and get him to back down and acquiesce to me and, and exhibit the behavior that I want to that I want him to. But see, if you're a man with backbone like I am, you're going to just look at a woman like that in her eyes with a look expression like everything you're saying right now is going in one ear and out the other ear. And I'm going to ask you, O'Shea, why am I able to stay cool, calm, collected, confident, and composed despite the fact that this woman's giving me all these criticisms and insults? Because you know that um, she's actually interested because if she wasn't, she would probably just like walk away or she would ignore go. what you're saying. There you go. The fact that she's fighting. If a, woman is a, if a woman is a genuine rejector, she is never going to take the time to criticize you or insult you. Ever. <laughs> it's not worth her time. A genuine rejector is just going to end the conversation and walk away. So remember that, fellas. If a woman begins to go get theatrical with you, get loud with you and all that other shit, start hurling criticism, and insults, she's just trying to test your backbone. She's trying to test to see if you a thin skinned motherfucker, if you got a fragile ego and if you got weak backbone. And once you confirm that for her, she knows you're a bitch 
She knows you're a beta male, and the best you're going to hope for is being in her friend zone. Right. But if you show her that you got strong backbone, she's going to eventually give in. And the final category, which is the category that led to me talking about these four archetypes again, okay. is the manipulative time waster. And see, this is probably out of the four archetypes. This is the number one archetype that most conventional PUAs always overlook and rarely talk about. Like, I remember I had an interview one time with this female PUA named Kezia Noble. She's well known in Europe and in the United Kingdom. She's considered the top female PUA. And it's funny, when I talked about my four archetypes, she was totally in agreement with reciprocators. She was in total agreement with rejectors. She was in total agreement with wholesome pretenders and erotic hypocrites. But when I started talking about manipulative time wasters, she was like, no, Alan, no, I don't, I don't believe there's any woman that's a manipulative time waster. And I was like, yes, they are. She's like, no, I think most manipulative time wasters are actually what you call the erotic hypocrites. I said, no, they're two different things. A manipulative time waster, in simple terms, is a woman that knows from the get-go that she's not interested in dating you. She's not interested in having sex with you. But she feels like you have something to offer her in the way of flattering attention in the way of entertaining conversation, in the way of financial and non-financial favors, and in the way of being an empathetic, emotionally empathetic listening ear. So again, that goes back to that example I gave with you, O'Shea, with the woman just wants you to entertain her for a half hour. Mm -hmm. That woman knows she, she don't want to give you no pussy, right? but she ain't going to tell you that because she feels like if she straightforwardly says, O'Shea, you ain't never getting this pussy, what's going to happen? You ain't going to never flatter her again. You ain't going to never take time to entertain her again. You ain't going to never offer her no free lunch or free dinner. You ain't going to never sit down and listen to her talk about her problems. So she going to always act like sex is possibly on the table. Like she might say something like, well, I don't know, Shay, if you keep being funny three months from now, you might just get this pussy. You might be all up in this pussy. <laughs> and you like, oh, yeah, shit. Three months, yeah, okay. She ain't gonna give you that pussy. Right. <laughs> let me let me just do this real quick. Um, I want to give a shout out, man, to uh again, uh, uh Master Ring on TV Raw, a aka Blackmail Advice TV. He, he drops a twenty dollar super chat. Brothers, you have to get the right uh get right to the point when you meet women by speaking your mind and on what you like and desire. They will take you serious when you're raw and uncut. Works all the time. He's in definitely agreement with you. Thanks for the shout. A uh, shout out, O'Shea. Shout out to Ringo TV Raw. Yeah, man, he's in there, he's in the comments going crazy, like preach. Preach. <laughs> oh man. Stefan Click Skills. Young guy, 20 years old, never lie. Always be more with one, uh, be, be more one with these. Oh, I think he's interesting. Be both Moses women. Uh, and he does another super chat of five dollars for any night. My favorite dating coach is Alan Roger Curry. Mo one changed my life. Tell her straight up what you want if you want to have casual sex with her, and that's it. Shout out to the to, to the to the brother Stefan Clink Skills, man. Uh doing a great job. Uh, now dating mindset and raw game, uh, kingdom 429 says never waste time trying to figure them out when they're supposed to be wasting daytime figuring you out. You dig king shit. Shout out to them. Shout out to my boy Blackie Speaks out in the building, Mr. Almost 30 million YouTube subscribers. Man, that's my boy. Shout out to Blackie Speaks, man. 219,000 uh subscribers, man. He's with my favorite hip hop channel. If you ever want to hear what's going on in the hip hop world, Blackie Speaks. He is the don of that shit. Shout out to him. My boy RB the Breakthrough. I got some big homies, man, doing this shit. Shout out to Excessive. More wisdom. Keep this shit coming. So, yeah, man. Alan Roger Curry, man. You looks like, uh, bro, you got uh, a lot of folks. Shout out. Uh, Uncle Rom sent me. Thanks, man. Shout out to Rom. He writes on the NegroManosphere.com on Thursdays. Um, Alan, let me let me uh, kind of get back at this. and I won't hold you too long. But with respect to the approach, because I know there was a difference of opinion uh between you know uh, alpha male strategies um donovan and you I, I think you know what let me just say this there's a big difference on the approach between you and every other dating coach in the world so let me just say that i would when, agree with that when it comes to agree with that. the first initial approach there's nobody that has your point of view you're very I don't know, I would say like far left or right, whatever you want to consider the right or left on the you know dating coach thing. Okay, three to five minutes, you have some type of sexual conversation. 
Okay. Now a lot of guys, uh, and Tony Mace was talking about it in, in with the Mo too. Like a lot of guys could walk up to a female in and say, be very upfront and honest. What is that mode four? I'm thinking, right? Mode four in mode one. Can, before you kind of answer that question, can you go over the different modes for people who don't know your work and they're watching this interview right now? Let's go over the sure, different sure. modes. Yeah, the different mode. Here's the different modes. Um, well, you guys pretty much already know mode one. Okay. Start with mode two. Okay. Mode two is when each one of the modes, I would say, has a private, a primary motivating factor behind it. Okay. A motivating factor behind each of the modes. And mm -hmm. I'll identify the, the motivating factor for each mode. Mode two. When you're mode two with a woman, your primary motivating factor is I want to get you to like me before I let you know what any of my desires, interests, and intentions are. That's what propels mode two behavior. You feel like you have to get a woman to develop a favorable opinion of you, look at you as a nice guy, a good guy, um, somebody that's not a weirdo or a psycho. You feel like you need to make a woman comfortable in your presence. Yeah. And then you feel like once that woman gives you kind of that, I like you stamp by saying something like, oh, Shane, you are such a great guy. Mm -hmm. You were so friendly and entertaining. And then right there, you feel like you got your stamp. So yeah, then you will slowly but surely transition into saying, hey, you know, I think we should get together sometime and, you know, maybe have dinner. Or I think we should get together, you know, and uh, or you might even be bold and say, hey, well, now that I know that you like me, I think we should be intimate. You can get women in bed being mo too. I've gotten women in bed being mo too. Here's the problem with mode two, the main weakness of mode two. If you'll be in mode two with a woman that's a reciprocator, it's never going to hurt you to be mode two. But when you're dealing with a woman that's a rejector and even more so a manipulative time waster, you just, however much time you just spent talking to that woman, it could be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, because you never laid out your desires, interests, and intentions on the table. With a rejector or a manipulative, manipulative time waster, you set yourself up just for wasting a bunch of time. Because like, let's say a rejector. Let's say you spent 20 minutes just being a nice guy, engaging in flattering and entertaining trivial small talk. And then at the 20 minute mark, you say, hey, well, I'm attracted to you and I think we should go to dinner. She's going to say, oh, no, I'm sorry. I enjoyed this conversation, but I already have a boyfriend or I'm already engaged to be married. Mm -hmm. And I've had guys come back to me like friends of mine back in the day would do that all the time. They'd be coming from a club and they call me sometimes late at night, be pissing me off. They'd be like, man, Alan, check this out, man. I'm at this fine ass honey, right? And I'd be like, yeah, man, I was talking to her for like 45 minutes, man. I had her like laughing and shit. She was smiling the whole conversation. And then at the end of the conversation, when I talked about, you know, let's hook it up for lunch or dinner and some shit, she going to say, oh, I'm married. Man, why that bitch waste all my time like that? And I'd be like, nah, bro, you wasted 45 minutes. <laughs> you, you wasted 45 minutes. Because you didn't lay your, your desires and interests and intentions out on the table from the get-go. Because mm -hmm. if you ain't laid no, uh, your desires and interests on the table, why would a woman reject you? She going to look at you as just being friendly and wanting to talk. Women love to talk. Ain't no woman going to reject a friendly, flattering, or entertaining conversation. Right. No woman, unless she's just a straight-up bitch from hell. Ain't no woman going to reject a friendly, flattering, entertaining conversation. So mm -hmm. that's the weakness of Mo2. Mo2 only really works with a woman that's a reciprocator. Mm -hmm. All the other three archetypes, you're going to be shit out of luck with Mo2. Mo3 is even worse. I actually have three subcategories of Mo3. Okay. Mo, the, oh, I talked about the motivating factor. A motivating factor for Mo3 is you want to keep your desires and interests hidden indefinitely. You don't want them known at all. You want them to be hidden. Why? Because you have a profound fear of being rejected and you have a profound fear of potentially being indefinitely ignored by a woman. When you're a mole three guy, 
you would rather get negative attention from a woman than no attention at all. You would rather get platonic attention than no attention at all. So what are my three subcategories of mode three? Number one is what I call mode three timid. Okay. A mode three timid, that's a guy who just won't approach a woman, period. He'll go to a club, stand on the wall with his buddies and be like, damn, she's fine. Damn, look at her. She takes his hair. Damn, look at her. She good looking. And that's that's like two hours. <laughs> they had this club for two hours. They just stand against the wall the whole time. Like, damn, that girl's sexy. They never say shit. That's a mode three timid. Next one is a mode three target. A mode three target. Okay. Mode three targets are tailor made for gold digger type. Because okay. what a mode three target is going to do is he has enough confidence to approach a woman and initiate a conversation with her, but he's going to spend his whole conversation trying to impress a woman. So he's going to be like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I own a convertible Bentley, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, I own a house on the beach. Yeah, yeah. You know, I graduated from Harvard. Yeah, yeah. You see this watch? It's a Rolex watch. $10,000. Yeah, yeah. So he's hoping the woman's going to say, damn, you are a big baller. You got it like that. And because of that, I just want to give you some of this pussy. You're like, yeah, I got a yacht in the, in the harbor right now. Yeah, shit, I got it going on. So uh, uh, Mo3 Target, he never comes out and says, I want to get with you or I'm interested in you. Mm. He just lays out his resume of achievements accomplishments and material possessions and hopes that the woman just gives them some pussy because of it. then the final mode three subcategory is the fun clubber. And, and Osha, you've heard me use that term a lot on your show. Fun clubbing is like the worst thing you could do. That's when you indefinitely pretend like you're content with being a woman's purely platonic friend for days, weeks, months, even sometimes years. And you're just hoping by allowing yourself to be a woman's platonic friend that one day in the future, she's just going to say, <laughs> oh, shit, you been my, my good buddy for the last nine months, but it just so happens I'm horny today and I want you to fuck me because you've been such a good friend for me for the last nine months. <laughs> Fellas, I'm going to tell you, there's a point oh oh one percent chance that you ever going to get the pussy from a woman after being her platonic friend for X number of weeks or X number of months. You fun club. And then finally, Mo Four is a guy who I don't know. He might start a YouTube show that centers around black female fuckery. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and you know, he, he might he might refer to himself as the you know the voice of the everyday brother. You know, that's that's just throwing that out there. You know, a Mo Four motherfucker is a motherfucker that was Mo Two at some point in the past. Mo three at some point in the past, or a combination of two, it never led to him getting any pussy. So he becomes angry and bitter and resentful, and he develops his attitude like, man, fuck all these women, man. Ain't nothing but bitches, man. Fuck all these women. Ain't nothing but hoes, gold diggers, and no good bitches. Fuck them all. Now, here's the lucky thing with a Mo four guy. Okay. Because Mo four is kind of like the evil twin to Mo one. You actually, I've known guys at least occasionally, to get some pussy from being more forward. Because the one thing that's similar to more one is you become so straightforward with women. But the downside is your straightforwardness is coming from a place of anger, hatred, bitterness, and resentment. It's not coming from a place of confidence and desire. It's coming from a place of bitterness. So you might go up to a woman and say, you know what? You a fucking bitch. I just want to put my dick in your mouth and come all in your mouth because you a bitch. Now, there's some women who are what's known as masochistic. That's a BDSM term. A masochist is a woman who likes to be verbally abused. She likes to be humiliated. If a woman's a masochist and you come at a mo for style, she's actually, gonna, her pussy going to get wet because she, she gets off on being verbally abused. She likes to be, you know, called a no good bitch and a no good slut. So, some more fours might get some, at least some occasional pussy because they'll be straightforward. But again, their straightforwardness is coming from a place of anger. But more one is when, in real simple terms, is when you just have reached a point where you don't have time for lies. You don't have time for head games. You don't have time for toying with women or trying to give women the misleading impression that you value 
their non-sexual companionship for more than what you do. And let me clear up before we end this conversation. I definitely want to clear up a few misconceptions that were discussed last Sunday and last Sunday's discussion. Okay. Number one, I hear I've been hearing this for probably like 20 years. More than one, yeah, it sounds effective, but I think it only works for guys who are like really good looking, like pretty boy type motherfuckers. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. As I said in one of my videos last week, that's like saying that if you are average looking guy or less than average looking guy, that you have to be a liar with women. You have to be a manipulator with women. You have to be a verbal coward or a whiner and diner. That's bullshit. I got some frat brothers and other friends and clients who are nobody's pretty boy. They are very average looking and they've they've had much success with Mo One. I would say actually just the opposite. I would say you can afford to be more of a liar and a bullshitter when you're good looking. You don't have to be more one when you're good looking. It ain't no necessity to be more one when you're good looking. That's when you can get away with being full of shit. Um, so that's a that's a big ass invalid myth that only good looking. Now, let me make something clear though. There's a difference between saying you got to be good looking for more one to help you get a woman in bed versus saying a woman has to be physically attracted to you. Okay. Okay. I don't argue with the second one. Any woman that decides to have sex with you has to be physically attracted to you to some degree, unless you tricking. Mm-hmm. That's the only exception. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he raises his hand like he said, "Hey, did somebody say tricking? Tricking?" Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But I mean, honestly, if a woman is either a street prostitute, a professional call girl, or upscale erotic escort, she's trying to make money. So she's not going to make sure, make it a mandatory requirement that she finds you physically attractive or sexually appealing. She's going to fuck any guy who get who pays her the right price of money. So that would be the only exception. But if you're talking about having sex with any woman for free, right? There has to be something about you that she's. It could be your eyes. It could be the shape of your head. It could be your overall physique. Mm -hmm. It could be how big your dick is, whatever, your skin tone. But there has to be something that a woman finds physically attractive. So for a guy to say, well, more woman only work for a woman that's physically attracted to you. Now, that's true. A woman has to be physically attracted, but that's not the same thing as saying you've got to be good looking. You don't have right. to be look like a fitness model or a movie star marquee actor mm-hmm. to be more one. Second one along of now this one actually I haven't heard too often, but Donovan threw this one out there. Donovan in last week's conversation said, I think you gotta be really wealthy in order to be more one. That could be no further from the truth. Cause the knowing years I had the most success being my one was years when I was flat broke. I was I was damn I was broke for just about all of my twenties and at least half of my thirties, and I was getting pussy out the yin yang. So you ain't got to have no money. That's beta male shit. Money is beta male. That ain't no no true total alpha male needs money to get pussy. That's beta male shit. Uh, and then finally, and I saw this just in your chat room today, I've heard some guys say, well, Alan, I think more one would only work with women if you live in a real large metropolitan city. But if you live in a small or medium sized city, it's going to hurt your reputation. Mm-hmm. That's bullshit. The first city I start being Mo one in was Bloomington, Indiana. Mm-hmm. I want everybody to look up the population of Bloomington, Indiana. Okay. That's where Indiana University is. The whole city got to be like no more than what, 60, 70,000 people. Mm-hmm. It's considered small. And that's the first city I was more one in, man. Ain't nothing wrong with having a reputation for straightforwardly telling women that you want to have sex with them. Mm-hmm. You, what, what you don't want to get a reputation as is for being a harasser. Right. You don't want to be a harasser. What, what makes you a harasser? If a woman rejects you, Leave her the fuck alone. Right. 
And see, a lot of men get mad at me, including uh, Mr. Everyday, the voice of the Everyday Brother. This is one of the things that contributed to us falling out. Because he got mad when I did a video where I emphasized that a lot of men in society can't handle rejection. And it's the truth. A lot of you men, that's why the simple reason why a lot of you men don't want to be more one. You're scared of quick, abrupt, straightforward rejection, man. I, I'm not scared of rejection. I actually right. dare women to reject me. I dare women to reject me. And O'Shea, if you, you, you're a perceptive guy, why would I dare a woman to reject me? Mm, this one, I don't know. Um, why would you dare a woman to reject you? Because I, I think it probably shows you that you're, you're really confident in what you're saying, but... Um, There's at least two, minimum two reasons why I'm going to have the attitude of, I dare you to reject me. Okay. Number one, when you have that underlying attitude of, I dare you to reject me, it shows a woman that you got other options, that you don't that. need to fuck I was going to say that. I was going to say that. Go ahead. See, because one of the things I preach a lot, and I know this Alvin Bell strategy has been preaching this too. He, he probably going to admit that he borrowed it from me, but I've been talking about that for 20 years, man. You got to show women, man, you got options, man. It, once a woman knows that she's your number one option for sexual companionship, or even worse, your only option for sexual companionship, that's when a woman's definitely going to play games with you. In some cases, she's going to quickly just leave you alone. But at minimum, she's just going to play games with you because she knows you ain't got no other options. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't she play games with you? You ain't got no other. Who else you got to fuck other than her? I always want women to be under the impression that I, I, if, if she don't give me the pussy, I got two or three other women ready to give me some pussy. So that's the number one thing why I have the attitude of I dare you to reject me. And the second thing is simply that if a woman is genuinely genuinely not interested in having sex with me, I want her to reject me. Right. I don't want her to, I don't want her to become a manipulative time. See, because this is blowing people's mind when I tell them this, but this is what's going to happen when you deal with a manipulative time waster. Mm -hmm. Manipulative time wasters will refuse to reject you. And most guys, sometimes guys will be like, what? Are you serious? Are you telling me that some women will actually re Man, I can name times when I've had to ask women 10 times to reject me and they wouldn't do it. I'll say, Linda, when we fucking. I don't know. I don't know if we are fucking. I'll say, okay. Well, then tell me straightforwardly that we're not fucking. No, I'm not going to say it. Tell me. No, no, not going to say it. Tell me. Tell me we're not going to fuck. No, not going to say it. Then tell me we're going to fuck. No, not going to say it either. See, that's the MO of a manipulative time waster. Manipulative time wasters, they don't want to straightforwardly reciprocate your desires and interests, but at the same time, they don't want to straightforwardly reject your desires and interests. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because then they can't exploit you. That's why women, that's why manipulative women never like to straightforwardly reciprocate or straightforwardly reject. Because how can they exploit you? If a woman is straightforwardly, quickly and straightforwardly says, yeah, you can definitely get this pussy. Are you taking her to a five-star restaurant? Nope. <laughs> if a woman tells you straightforwardly that you're never going to get the pussy, are you taking her to a five-star restaurant? Nope. Exactly. Women know that. Women know that. So that's why women like to play games. They're going to play games with the guys who they do want to fuck, which is why you got wholesome pretenders and, and erotic hypocrites, and they're going to play games with the guys who they don't want to fuck, which is why you got manipulative time wasters. See, reciprocators and rejectors are the women you should respect the most. Those are women that when they're interested, they're going to tell you straight up, yeah, I'm ready to give you some pussy. If they're not interested, they're going to tell you straight up, I'm not going to give you any pussy, so you're wasting your time talking to me. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys get mad at rejectors, but I always tell men, you should appreciate and respect the women who are genuine rejectors because mm -hmm. they ain't trying to bullshit you. They ain't trying to waste your time. But most women, the highest percentage of women that the average guy is going to cross paths with out of the four archetypes is going to be the manipulative time wasters. Because women are the type that even the men who they don't want to have sex with, they want those men to flatter them. They want those men to entertain them. They want those men to perform financial and non-financial favors for them. And they want, at bare minimum, those men to become emotionally empathetic listening ears for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me let me do this real quick, guys. I want to um, go over the Super Chat 
And the brother Eric P says the Grim Reaper ARC freelance writer mm-hmm. OSHA, OSHA ARC is live. And I say keep it 100% come real or don't bother coming at all. Odinga Mobutu. Drake took a black face picture. <laughs> Folks, be careful. So those mulattoes are rising. The mulattoes. Uh, okay. Um, so, guys, listen, man. I really thank you, Alan, for coming on. As you guys know, I got a flight back to uh, got a flight to Amsterdam, actually, uh, and then a connecting flight from Amsterdam to, to Poland. So I have ten hours uh, in Amsterdam. So I'm not to say I'm gonna go smoke some of this weed because y'all know I'm Christian, but anything is possible. So I just want to thank Alan, man, for coming on. You know, uh, you know, he just hit me up at the last second. Me and Donovan, I wanted to give you. I haven't been doing any shows the last three to four days since I've been in Johannesburg. Um, but I, I will not be traveling for 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 sure for at least two or three months after this. Um, so I'll definitely be in Poland for for quite some time. So Alan, man, is there anything else you want to, um, you know, you well, want to um, Real you? quick, I got got three quick comments, then I'm done. One, um, I want to give you props, man, for you. See, a lot of you O'Shea listeners, y'all probably only listen to the shows where he does interviews. But I want y'all to pay more attention to O'Shea's travel-related shows because, man, that show he had about Brazil, I thought was just a brilliant episode on his channel. I love all of his shows I have to do it just because I love to travel. Number two, whenever I come on O'Shea's show for an interview, I like to give away at least a handful of goodies. I think most of his longtime listeners already have one of my ebooks or one of my audio books. But if you don't, the first five people that write me an email at coaching at mo1.net, that's coaching at m o d e o n e dot net. First five, not the first 10, not the first 20, not the first 25. But the first five people who don't already have it, I want you, I will send you a free complimentary copy of my updated Mode One ebook. Or if you prefer, if you don't have a, a, an account on audible.com, you've never bought a, at least one audiobook on audible.com, I'll send you a free audiobook. A free audiobook. Now, if you already have an account on audible.com, then I won't be able to send you a complimentary. Uh, audiobook copy, but if you don't have an account yet on audible.com, I'm gonna send you a free audiobook. So it'd be either a free audiobook or a free ebook. And finally, to quickly address in 30 seconds or less, I've had some guys say, Alan, don't you think in this Me Too climate that Mo One is risky? No. If you examine most of the cases of these Me Too incidences, hardly any of these guys, including Morgan Freeman, they were not mole one. They did not just straightforwardly invite a woman to share their company. What they did is just say a bunch of sexually provocative shit to women or expose their genitalia to women or in some cases tried to rape or date rape women. That ain't mole one. It ain't a crime to let a woman know you want to exchange orgasms with her. It's not a crime to do that. Remember that. Sorry, I had to turn my camera off. So listen, guys, I really thank you guys. So make sure you hit the, you know, um, coaching at mold1.net, right? So um, yeah, coaching at mold1.net. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So we got a great month ahead for June, brothers. Um, when I get back, you know, hopefully within 24 hours from now, um, you know, we got the moderator award. Shout out to Freelance Ronan. We got the moderator awards from June to July. Um, so we're going to do that because we had the... Um, the Negro Manosphere Awards already. Now we're going to do the Moderator Awards for uh, the channels. Anel, ARC versus Obsidian over Pusha versus Pusha T versus Drake. <laughs> uh, so, oh, uh, <laughs> so, so guys, listen, we, we thank you guys. You know, thank you for supporting us on the channels. Thank you for supporting us on the Patreon. Thank you for supporting the Negro Manosphere.com. Uh, you know, we, we, we have tried to at least, and, and yesterday, Axie was able to overpay Al Roger Curry for the Ju- we pay I pay for July yesterday right. Yep, yep. Yeah, so yeah, O'Shea is the best at, at paying early, man. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever I I actually gave O'Shea some money back because I can't I can't write an article for the last. Speaking of that, you know, as soon as this interview ends, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write my article for tomorrow, and because uh, I never want O'Shea to be mad at me, be like, motherfucker, where my article at? <laughs> <laughs> 
So I want to thank you, brothers, right? Because you guys are able to, you know, we talk about, um, you know, the things the white manosphere is doing or white people are doing stuff like that. They're doing some great things. Uh, but you know, just starting small. You know, the 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 money that you guys you know provide to us, we're able to pay brothers. I, uh, Tony Macy, I I just pay for June also. Um, but you know, Alan Don, Donovan Rom, those guys have been paid all the way up until July, and that is because of the uh, support you guys give us. So if we're able to keep our best people coming on doing shows. They can come on do podcasts, and typically, you know, I send a little something to them, you know, uh, for coming on and stuff like that. You know, but especially Alan. Um, so guys. I thank you guys for the support. We have some really great talent out here. You know, Tony Macy and me and him will be hooking up this week. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, Max City Limits. And we got some of the, we have, you know, I would say if not at the equivalent, I, I will put the Negro Manosphere's talent up against anybody up in any part of any Manosphere. I don't care what side it is. Return to Kings of Western Men. My, you know, I would say our guys against any of those guys any day of the week as far as game, uh, approaching, and any of that. I don't think that these guys, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't, I, I would bet uh, that, that we have a lot more talent than what people may give us credit for. And I remember talking to Alan Roger Curry about this in 2016. I said, hey, man, do you think that this is going to work? <laughs> you remember what you said, Alan? I said, I don't know, but we can give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> well, do, you think it, do you think it's worked? Oh, hell yeah, man. Now you got two. Negro Manosphere writers that's going to be speakers at the uh, 21 convention, man. You know, a lot of non-black people know about the site. I'd be having white women. They say, Alan, tell me more about the Negro Manosphere. You know, so, some of them still buying that myth. they like, I bet all the writers got big black dicks, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So anyways, guys, uh, Alan, anything else you want to say before we close out? No, uh, just I always appreciate when you have me on. And matter of fact, on this particular interview, you know, most of the time you you invite me to do an interview. Sometimes you could bug me to do an interview. So I want to let your listeners know I actually requested this interview to clear up a few misinterpretations, misconceptions about Mo One because I know O'Shea right now is has a real busy schedule. He's living in that nice crib in in South Africa. Man, just continue to support this brother O'Shea, man. I know he got a lot of haters. He got a lot of people who like to underestimate him and take jabs at him. But this brother is doing it, man. He's doing it. This dude is a, a, a insatiable workaholic. He never slacks. He never gets complacent. So anytime you, you donate money, whether it's a super chat or whatever, it's well worth it. Because James Brown, they used to call him the hardest working man in show business. And Donovan Sharp is, I mean, O'Shea Duke Jackson is the hardest working brother on YouTube. I appreciate that. So, guys, listen, man, thank you uh, for the support. Um, thank you for, you know, because a lot of times before I want to say this, a lot of people didn't want to come and deal with, um, with, 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 you know, the black manosphere or deal with, you know, um, us because they, they felt like, you know, hey, black guys are cheap, you know. But now we have created a market where we can get our people to come in and do shows. People want to actually come onto the platform. They know that they can actually get paid for what they do. They know they can, you know, get super subscribers, stuff like that. So this is all we need to do. We're going to be having our own um, convention. If not in 2019, we'll definitely have it in 2020. Hopefully to be somewhere like in, the, in Atlanta or someplace like that. But we're not far off from doing that. All you brothers need to do is keep your pledges up uh, $5 a month. Now, some of you niggas, I will say this. I noticed you make a pledge. And on the last day of the month, you take it down to a dollar. All right. Now, don't don't do that. If you can't afford to pledge a certain thing, just keep it at five dollars. OK, don't, you know, get all the content for the free at the end of the month. You change it to a dollar. All right. So don't 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 do that. All right? If you can just stick with the five dollar pledge. If we get a thousand brothers doing that, we can have conventions and stuff like that. All right. So but anyways, thank you for your support. Alan, thanks so much, man. Thank you. Peace.